Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I would like to talk about the massive hailstone in Quito, Ecuador. The Arctic chieftain needs to be rescued from summer ice in Antarctica, as well as the Arthur Anderson in the Great Lakes. 700 foot freighters stuck for five days, blue algae in Hong Kong, and another completely out of season early typhoon in February in the Pacific Ocean. In Quito, Ecuador, hailstones raining out of the sky, massive hailstorm blanketing parts of the city. Look how deep that is. That is more than 30 centimeters deep. Quito, next to Colombia. You don't normally associate this kind of hail and cold with somewhere completely in the tropics. Look how deep that is. That car is buried. Imagine trying to get your motorbike through that type of hail. People standing around in shorts. You know, that's something incredibly special when you bring your children out to play in the ice near the equator. Also, another hailstorm in the Punjab in India damages wheat crops there. Let's take a look into the southern hemisphere down in the southern latitudes. Notice the ocean temperatures far below normal all the way south of Australia, south of New Zealand, which makes me laugh when I see this. Everybody's talking about global warming. Here they need to rescue a ship in the southern ocean and it's supposed to be summertime down there but it needs to be rescued from heavy ice the yellow circle is the approximate location of the rescue some images here of the arctic chieftain rescue now look at this this is the sea ice during the summer as well as water temperatures are three to five degrees celsius below normal and taking a look back at the little ice age reconstruction temperature map, you'll notice down in Australia, in southern Australia, during that time it cooled considerably. Last year, the areas in blue experienced extreme cold, which damaged the wheat crop. Australia's wheat exports were off about 5%, and in certain growing areas, they lost up to 13% of their wheat production. Let's jump into the Great Lakes region here. This is a comparison from 2013, 14, and 15. You notice the density of ice is higher this year. Another look at it for you. And with heavy ice building in the Great Lakes, a simple search on Google and you can't help but stumble across dozens and dozens of references to the Arthur Anderson needing to be rescued. It's a 700 foot long freighter. Coast Guard's out in force now, taking double ships to clear lanes and rescue ships. Here's a few images of the ice they're experiencing. What kind of conditions? How are you going to turn that ship around? That is a huge ship. This is just a snippet of the waterborne commerce through the lakes there. And when everything freezes up, there's still two months left in the Great Lakes ice season. You can expect the ice to become thicker. It's 8 to 10 feet thick where these ships are being stuck. By the end of the year, you could consider a lot of these ports being locked in. Jumping over to Hong Kong and Asia, just last month in January, they had these incredible glowing blue sea algae. It's actually a fluorescent blue, which makes you wonder. The oceans seem to be adjusting to the cooler temperatures. There's algae blooms like this. Here's another anomaly. It's the second typhoon this year that's formed completely out of season, three to four months early. This was Typhoon Higos. Here's a better view of it on the map. You can get a glimpse of it in the bottom right corner of this image. And when I say two typhoons, this was the first one. This is what caused snow in Vietnam back in January. So this is the second typhoon. And when we look at the Eastern Pacific Basin average cumulative number of systems, there are not supposed to be storms in January or February or March or April. And we've had two already, one in January, one in February. Completely anomalous, that right there. Let me bring you back to the sunshine. Everything's about cold and ice. Let's go to the beach. The oceans are adjusting to cooler temperatures coming, and nature knows something in advance, which it often does. We the humans seem to figure out the lag time years after nature had figured it out. This was Sydney's beaches in September of 2014, just about five months ago. Strange and extremely rare algae balls on the beach. But at the same time, they also had these same blue tides that were in Hong Kong. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Taking a look at the Greenland ice core temperature reconstruction over the last 10,000 years from the Minoan warming, the Roman warming, and the medieval warming, all of which were warmer than today. If you follow the green line, which I included in the graph here, you notice we're on a downtrend. So it seems that we're at the peak and we should start declining along with the solar minimum that we're going into right now. This would definitely follow the trend. And when we drop another couple of degrees, Welcome back to Maunder Minimum Conditions.